Hey guys, this is Nikhil. So up to the last class, we have seen how does these elements that is resistor, inductor and a capacitor individually behave when kept in a AC source. Now, what I'm going to do is, now I'm going to make a series combination of these elements. So the first combination is RL. That means a resistor and inductor I am placing in a series and connecting it to a AC source. So therefore, it is called as a series AC circuit. So what is that behavior of any series circuit? All the elements will have the same amount of current or the current will be the same. So if you look at this series circuit, you have a resistor and inductor connected in series. So there is some current released by this source. Let us say that current is I of T. So the same I of T current will be flowing through both of the R and L. So when uh, current is flowing through resistor and inductor, resistor will try to oppose the current. When resistor tries to oppose the current, what happens? A voltage will be dropped across the resistor, isn't it? And that voltage dropped across the resistor is Vr. Similarly, we have also seen that even though an inductor, in an inductor is not any physical element, is not some physical property, but still it has got some imaginary or some illusionary property called as reactance, which is capable of dropping the voltage, isn't it? But still it does not consume any power in the process of dropping that voltage, but still it can drop the voltage. Whereas resistor will consume power in the process of dropping the voltage and that power consumed by the resistor is given by I square into R. This thing we already know, but whereas power in an inductor is equal to zero, it does not take any power, but still it can drop the voltage and uh, that property of inductor which is capable to do that is reactance. So you will have some voltage dropping across the inductor also due to the react and the units of reactance is same as units of resistance that is ohms so the voltage dropped across the resistor is given by vr that will be equal to i into r as per ohms law similarly voltage dropped across the inductor will be vl is equal to i into x understand so if i am trying to apply the kvl in this loop then i can say total voltage will be equal to voltage drop across the resistor plus voltage drop across the inductor. Do you think this is really correct? No, absolutely wrong. This kind of analysis or this kind of uh, equation is valid. Okay. It is valid only in DC circuit. Why in DC circuits? Why? Because in DC, if you please inductor, it is equal to a short circuit. Capacitor is equal to an open circuit. That means there is no effect of placing the inductor or capacitor in a DC circuit. Only it shows some effect in AC circuits, that thing we already seen. Suppose you are having AC circuit and if that AC circuit is comprised only of R, then only this relation will be valid. But if this AC circuit includes R and L, this is invalid. Why is it like that? We will see in this both R and L, both of these elements, one quantity is common that is current. So let me take current as a base or a reference quantity and let us see how the voltage across the resistor and inductor and total voltage are behaving. So what I am doing now, I will take this current, the total supply current I of T as the reference, as the base quantity and I will draw the vector of how voltage across resistor and inductor are behaving. So we have already concluded that the voltage across the resistor and current through the resistor always will be in phase. That means the phase angle between them will be zero degrees, always on the same phase. Therefore, Vr and I, what is the phase angle between them? Zero degrees. So if this is IT, let us say this is Vr. So both are on above each other. So I just separated for the sake of understanding. So Vr and IR are basically separated by zero degrees. They both are on the same line. They both are parallel lines, I can say. So this is the Vr. Next, uh, Vl, voltage across the inductor. So we have already described the relationship, the phasor relationship between current through the inductor and voltage across the inductor. How are they? They are separated by 90 degrees. Who is first and who is last? First is voltage, last is current in case of an inductor. That means current lacks voltage by 90 degrees or if I can tell in reverse way, that is voltage leads current by 90 degrees. So already current is known. So where will the voltage will be? Voltage will be 90 degrees earlier. That means voltage leads current by 90 degrees. So 90 degrees voltage means this is VL. So voltage in the inductor is leading the current through the inductor by how much? 90 degrees. Understood? So like this, we got the relationship between voltage across resistor and inductor with respect to current. So these are two vector quantities, isn't it? These two are both vector quantities. According to triangular law of vector, 
the resultant will be the vector sum of these both isn't it the vector sum of these both so if you take the vector sum of these both then you will get this is the resultant quantity and that resultant itself is the v total supply voltage v which is this one total supply voltage v of t that is only the resultant in case of a resistor the angle between voltage across the resistor and current is 0 degrees in case of an inductor the angle between the voltage and current will be 90 degrees but when you are having the combination of l and r in the circuit then the angle between the total supply voltage and current will be some theta okay in case of rl circuit the angle between voltage and current will be the total current is this only no this is the total voltage so the angle between them is some theta where theta is greater than 0 degrees but less than 90 degrees that means between 0 to 90 degrees it will be varying again tell me who is lagging and who is leading theta current is lagging voltage by some angle theta that means 0 to 90 degrees but still it is behaving like an inductive circuit only so i can say this combination of r and l is an inductive circuit and basically to be frank this is nothing but a practical inductor because a pure inductor anything pure does not exist in the universe isn't it so if you take a pure inductor in a pure inductor exactly the current and voltage are displaced by 90 degrees but this is the practical case of inductor you are not getting exactly 90 degrees displacement but something less than 90 degrees but still current lacks the voltage or voltage leads the current this relation is valid so if you look at this uh, side this side is nothing but the same VL, isn't it? So I can say this is also VL. So from this, I can write down the value of V by using Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem says that hypotenuse is equal to under root side square plus side square. Hypotenuse is nothing but V because I am forming a right angle triangle over here. VR square plus VL square. So if I substitute the formula of value of our VR and VL like this IR, IR, IXL, then I will get some relationship like this. So in this, you see, I am getting V is equal to I into something. Basically what is V, v according to Ohm's law, V is equal to I into R. R is some opposing quantity. Now you see, this thing is also becoming an opposing quantity. That means, now there are two quantities that are opposing. That is R as well as L. R and XL, isn't it? R is a real opposing quantity. And XL as I told you, it is an imaginary opposing quantity. So that means you can write the total opposition as a complex number, isn't it? So, that complex number will be a real R plus an imaginary opposition reactance. So, the combination of these both itself is called as Z, which is also called as impedance. It is also called as impedance. It is also measured in ohms only. Magnitude of a complex number is nothing but R square plus XL square under root, isn't it? So, the same thing I got over here. So, I can write V is equal to I into V is equal to I into Z impedance, isn't it? If Z is an complex number definitely it will have a magnitude as well as it will have some phase angle isn't it that phase angle is nothing but the theta and that is given by the imaginary by real isn't it so i can write z is equal to in polar form magnitude of z at an angle theta isn't it so in a rl circuit the angle between voltage and current is nothing but the impedance angle so that is it for this video we will try to explore further all the related concepts from this in the next video and again we will study the combination of r and c and again we will see r l and c so this way by this way we will complete the entire series circuits okay thank you for watching